Welcome to the Wealthy Speaker Podcast. This is the podcast dedicated to people who want to speak more as a way to build their income and grow their business. Well, welcome, everyone, to the Wealthy Speaker Podcast. I'm your host, Jane Atkinson, and today's podcast is being brought to you by none other than the Wealthy Speaker Inner Circle Mastermind. This is an incredible year long business acceleration program for speakers who want to move their numbers up exponentially. You're earning minimum 75K, but we want you to go from maybe you're at 150, you want to go to 300, 300 to 500, et cetera, et cetera. We hold two group coaching calls each month with myself and my mastermind leader where we cover a wide range of topics. There's an opportunity for quarterly one-on-one calls with me and massive support from your fellow masterminders on our Facebook community where everyone is looking for those higher incomes. The material we're going to cover is going to be a deep dive into all things wealthy speaker. This is a really terrific program and it helps you build and keep momentum and I hope you will check it out at speakerlauncher.com. Now, something we've been talking about a lot on the blog and some of the Facebook live work has been selling. So our conversation today is about how to sell from any platform without selling a thing. Our special guest expert is Jane Powers. Welcome, Jane. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for having me. We've got Jane to the power of two. Ha, ha, ha. Get it? (laughs) See what I did there? (laughs) Her last name is Powers. (laughs) The Jane Squared. Now, let me share with everybody uh, a little bit about your bio and background, although this is just uh, the tip of the iceberg. Using her straightforward, big-hearted style, Jane Powers guides thousands to transform their message to money from any platform with her Speak to Profit formula. We're going to get into that formula. With decades of successful speaking and coaching, and perhaps most important of all, real-life experience founding and running multi-million dollar businesses, Jane appreciates that success is truly about the power of your message. Entrepreneurs hire Jane to speak with confidence and sell with authority so that they can generate a sustainable sales funnel to easily identify, capture, and close on ideal clients. With nearly 30 years of sales success as a corporate executive and entrepreneur, she brings you everything you need to take advantage of the most powerful marketing tool around to make money, speaking. So Jane, fill in the blanks on that bio. You have done some very interesting things in your career. Yes. I I always like to start out. Sometimes I used to start out my talks by saying my career started in the prison because it really does take, it gets some attention. Um, (laughs) Yeah. I started out, I I wanted to be in the world to make a difference. So I worked in the prison drug and alcohol treatment centers and I worked as a counselor in the community working in intervention, suicide prevention, um, sexual abuse prevention. So I really was in the front lines and I was doing working with schools and actually my first speaking gig was in 1980. I don't even like to admit to the year, but it was right out of college, 1985, 200 juvenile delinquents. And I had to get captured their attention. So from that day, I found that I could do it very well. And I thought not, you could never get me off a stage after that point. (laughs) Ah, good for you. That's the tough, tough crowd. Kids alone are a tough crowd, but juvenile delinquents, I'm thinking, are probably (laughs) sitting there with their arms crossed and just saying, you know, what do you, what do you got? <laughs> yeah, what do you got, old lady? And I was yeah. like, twenty, right? Yeah, exactly. Something. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah, so well, so the last uh, ten years, the last decade, what have you been doing? So prior to prior, I've always been speaking. I have been speaking since nineteen, like I said, nineteen eighty something. And many of you, as I as I mentioned this name, you will probably know this person. I hired Glennis Salisbury, oh. who is I mean, she has been my mentor since nineteen eighty seven. I hired her for an event, and the second I saw her hit the stage, I went, I am doing that. That is my life. And I followed her. Some like to say I stalked her, but I I like to say I followed her career. And 
I aspired to be as amazing as, a, as not only a speaker, but as a person. But um, so I've always been speaking. I've always been in sales. So in, gosh, 2003-ish uh, or one, I got my real estate license and I have always had sales experience and I came out of the womb selling. So it's just a natural conversation for me. So in real estate, I hit multi-millions in no time and then um, the market crashed and I went crumbling down with it. And I thought this was a sign that I was getting bored in real estate and there was something I had to do. So I got an email one from uh, Mary Morrissey. I don't know if you're familiar. Mary Morrissey, new thought leader. And she's like, be a life coach. And I'm like, what the heck? Okay. <laughs> so why I hit, not? Yeah, why not do that? So I became a spiritual life coach. And my first year, I took my real estate list and moved it over to my spiritual life coaching list, which I think any responsible <laughs> entrepreneur <laughs> would do. Oh my God. And they were dropping like flies, but I was actually to go out. What I did was I went out and I would speak and then I would follow up and sell. And I found that I was a bit of an impatient spiritual life coach. <laughs> so, <laughs> but people kept asking me, what the heck are you doing? You're making six figures. You are not you know, you are just a mindset, new thought expert. What are you doing? And I'm like, all I do is speak and sell. So I, after a couple of years of, of my mindset, I call it mindset coaching, I moved into speaker, being a speaking and sales coach. So that's what I currently do. Oh, wow. Okay. So you have got uh, a, a formula called speak to profit. We mm -hmm. have a lot of listeners who are out there um, delivering keynotes and all kinds of different uh, types of events, everything from TED Talks to two-day wor two workshops and maybe even three-day seminars um, and everything in between. Uh, give us what the basic is, what the structure is of the street, speak to profit formula. Okay. So in that, let me just, uh, I want to qualify it by saying, if you're out there speaking, hats off to you because a lot of people will not hit the platform. And if they are hitting the platform, I, I like to say they're boring, confusing, and inconsistent, the majority of them. And they're not connecting with their audience in order to close. Because quite frankly, I started, I told you, I was a corporate trainer. So I went in, I did sales training, I did leadership, I did mindset. So I was going into corporations and they would pay me a fee or I would go and speak for free a lot. I would go and speak for free and they'd give me hugs because I love speaking. And I thought, my mortgage company is not taking hugs. I need to figure <laughs> out how to monetize this. Right. So I took my sales experience, combined it with my speaking. Because I knew when I went into do a sales presentation, I had to do two things and I had to do them very well or I was not going to close the deal. So I, I want I to just, let me, let me give you my, th uh, let me support this, the elements of the talk by saying I have written people and that's what I do now. I write talks for people that sell or I help them write their own. Okay. Um, I have written two minute talks that Gita is a PR uh, media specialist out of Vancouver. I know And Gita. she, so that five minute talk, I'm sorry, hers was five minute from the NSA conference. That woman, I wrote that talk for her. She has closed six figures on that, that five minute talk. Awesome. I've helped people with two minute talks that have closed 50 to 60,000. I've gone into a room, have done a, I, I sponsor, so I can talk a little bit about that. But I've closed anywhere from seventy-eight thousand to to even more from one fifty-minute talk. So I want you to write these idea, items down because I'm not kidding you. This isn't like a bunch of hype, you know, Jane. We've all seen that where you're like, I'm going to ten x your business, just do this, and nobody's shooting you out of a can and giving you a special potion. It's, we just have to get out there. And I'm going to tell you the number one thing that we must do is be ourselves in our talk. Okay. You know, we don't want to be a, you see a lot of Tony Robbins wannabes. You see a lot of people out there that are, they're, I call it mimicking rather than modeling. Okay. That'd be like me going on a stage and being you 
it's it's inauthentic. So being your authentic self and showing up fully as you, that's my number one absolute, you got to do that. Because I know when I started speaking in Glenna and Mary, they're very formal speakers. So, and you, you hear me, I'm, I'm not formal. I'm edgy. I'm direct. I'm just like, you know, sometimes over the top. And I was out there speaking like Mary and Glenna because I thought that's how you did it. Those are professional speakers. I need to be professional. And I was wearing my suit. Well, now I wear leather pants and cool jackets and boots. So number one, be you. And you got to know what your point of view is. Like, what do you stand for? Who are you? The most important part of your talk. And I'm I'm going to give you a couple of different things. But the very first thing is you must position yourself as the expert. You must, without a doubt. That, But I also say, when you get on the stage, wow the stage. Don't get on and say, hey, thank you. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you, Jane, for having me. I'd love to thank everybody. There is enough time for that. And quite frankly, that is boring and you will lose the audience. So get on with your wow factor. That's what I call it. Okay. Hit the stage with a wow factor and then go right into your positioning statement. And that is, I'll, I'll give you mine. It's, it's literally, it is four sentences why you should be on that stage. This is what tees you up to sell. So, and, and here's a great activity for everybody. You remember this thing that's called paper? Like draw a line down the middle of the paper. In the left-hand column, write every single job you've had. In the right column, write every single problem you solved. So every job you had and every problem you solved, I did that and realized I increased profits in Denver, Colorado, and one of the branches in the employment industry by 240%. Wow. I had no idea. I was like pretty impressed with myself. I'm like, <laughs> and I hate numbers. So I don't know how I figured that out. But so let me just tell you, here's what it sounds like. Right. You introduce yourself and then you immediately position yourself. So I say, I have created two multi-million dollar businesses. I don't have to tell them in what industry. One happened to be real estate. One happened to be in, in the employment industry. But you don't have to go into big detail of why. Mm -hmm. What the audience is listening for is tell me something that makes you better than me. Because then I'm going to trust you. I'm going to I, I understand the credibility. I'm going to give you the authority to tell me then what to do. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid. This is where it, it's not bragalicious. It's the truth. So you go into, I've created two multi-million dollar businesses. I've created a six-figure coaching business in under 11 months with 300 on my list. And I did that with a handshake, a smile, and a talk. And then, this is the sexiest part, and I, I'm gonna, I, I forgot to ask you, but I, I, if I can give your audience a gift, this is gonna be- Absolutely, I, of course, gonna be we the, love gifts. Yeah, you're gonna be the hero, because this is the best thing. And then I've created, I trademarked an intro-mercial. So an intro-mercial is, how do I introduce myself in 17.5 seconds, that's how long mine is, 17.5 seconds so it sells. And I've created a formula. It has to stay in the order when I, I'll gift it. If, here, let me tell you where you can go to get it. Okay. My Speaker Success Kit. So MySpeakerSuccessKit.com. MySpeakerSuccessKit.com. We'll put that in the show notes. That's and, great. And just know that's like a secret hidden. The other one is out on the web somewhere, but this one is like, this is a program that I sell, but you guys will have access to it for free. So awesome. Thank yeah. Just, you. and it's, a, it's a killer. Everybody loves it. I have seven and eight figure people calling me going, just do one of those little things for me. Anyhow, I digress, which is, <laughs> which is quite normal. Um, okay. So you've got to position yourself it, the intro commercial goes in your positioning statement. So what I say is entrepreneurs hire me to speak with confidence and sell with authority because most are boring, confusing, and inconsistent, and they're losing tons of money. So I help them connect, capture, and close their ideal audience. Once I say that, I then transition into position them. So your first step is to position me. Position I'm yourself. awesome. Okay. Then you're positioning them. I like to say, 
you're screwed. <laughs> Position them is here's why you need me. Mm-hmm. In absence of positioning your audience's pain, problem, top of mind concern, in absence of helping them become aware of that, they are not going to engage in what you will eventually offer. So you've got to position them. Another great thing to do, and most of you have probably done this, left-hand column, all the pain your ideal client is in, and on the right-hand column, all the benefits you offer. So you want to know the pain points of your audience. So I'll go in and I'll talk, you know, you transition into position them, and I say, most of the time I, tradition, I, I transition by saying, and, you know, I was a top multi-million dollar producer in real estate. The wave fell. I fell with it. I like to say I slept like a baby. I woke up every two hours and cried. Most of you are waking up every two hours and crying. Many of you aren't even sleeping. Most of you aren't sure how to grow your business because you can't sell. You're not speaking to sell. And then I go into the pain points of the audience. So it doesn't matter. You could be a weight loss coach and the positioning is many of you. Now you'll notice you want to transition into position them with a very soft, confrontive manner. So for example, I'm saying many of you might, it softens it. I'm not saying, hey, you're all a bunch of losers. I'm saying. Right, because you risk uh, annoying the audience that way and saying that everybody's in the same boat, which they clearly aren't. And and yeah, because there's going to be some that'll be like, oh, I'm a better speaker than her, which good. That's great. But my, you know, you've got to position appropriately and have them Mm self-select. You've got to have them raising their hand. Is this a problem? That's why you, you, you do almost like a, a bullet. You just throw out every pain point. So some of you might be experiencing this. Some of you might be experiencing yep. this and on down the list. Okay, exactly. great. Yep. So and, we, we mm-hmm. uh, positioned ourselves and then we positioned them. Correct. Okay. Yep. So, it's, so it's, I'm awesome. This is why I'm awesome. And find numbers, statistics. When I'm doing a sales training, whether corporate or a conference, I will say, you know, I turned around profits in less than 11 months and, you know, by 240% in the employment industry, they hear numbers. Um, If you have, you know, I happen to have a couple of multi-million dollar, you know, experiences, but find your numbers. If you're a, a, you know, a six figure coach, a six figure speaker, if you're not, Just load any of your experience into there, but don't apologize for being great. And and that's really important. And don't go into too many details. Be so confident that you're just like, oh gosh, this is just how awesome I am. (laughs) And you just hit those, hit those numbers, um, you know, hit everything that you're doing, but add stats, add numbers, um, years also help. Uh, as you're saying, I mean, when I say I've been doing sales and speaking for 30 years, people either think I'm ancient or I just started really young. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you think that there's something about aligning with your authenticity and your own belief system in that? You know, you talked about teaching mindset earlier. If if you give me a line and I don't buy the line, the first sale is really to yourself, isn't it? Absolutely. And, and you know, that's one of the, that's why I keep saying, find what you, what you know is your greatness. Like, what are you brilliant at? Right. Um, I, I always say be a name dropper. I mean, right out of the gate. And I don't mean to do this. I just happen to do it. But Glennis Salisbury, Mary Morrissey, Bob mm-hmm. Proctor, I've worked with some of the greats in the industry Mm-hmm. Drop names. I, I mean, that's what you want to do. You want to build up your credibility so that people understand. Y- you know, I did it also with uh, Gita. Many people that were at NSA conference. I they, saw that speech. She, she was amazing. Now, mm-hmm. it, the speech I wrote for her, it happened to go well with her because she, man, she could pull that off. Mm-hmm. She pulled it off so well. Um, you know, I've written TED Talks for people that they go on and the TED talk is just, it's so authentic to who they are, Yeah. but you've got to, and and I deal with a lot of, when I coach individuals, it's how to take your dream, your vision 
and get out there and grow a business. And the way I do that is through speaking. Doesn't matter. It could be this type of speaking. Jane, it could be a podcast. It could be a stage right. video. It doesn't matter. But what happens is I like to have people go through and do their own assessment of who the heck they are. Find what made you great. And that's what you've got to present to the audience. But I'll tell you, I put a lot of people on stages that they don't always believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. And I help them with the talk, the formula that I set up, Mm -hmm. that once they get through, position me, position them, and the next step is the promise. So today, we're going to walk through these highly effective, simple strategies, tools, formulas to help you connect, capture, and close your ideal audience, whatever that looks like. So I build them up, help them take the audience, position them into a place where they're caregiving and serving to the audience. Right, right. Through the promise. So it, it's absolutely, and I, there's a, I, I had a, one of my clients, Heidi Mount, Oh my God, I met her a couple of years ago. She came up with big crocodile deer, tears falling down her face. She's like, I, I don't ever want to speak and I have to. And I'm like, well, you don't have to. And she's like, no, I never want to hit a stage. And I said, well, what do you want? And she said, I want you to help me just speak in public to tell people what I do. So I actually put her on a podcast and oh, Jane, she was so bad. Like, I think during the podcast at one point, I think she cried. I was watching and I'm like, oh my gosh, she's going down. She's, she is crying. And it was in the dental industry. So it was, you know, the majority is dominated by men. She went and she called me afterwards. She goes, what'd you think? And I'm like, oh, sweetie. I'm like, it was, it was so bad. She goes, it was, wasn't it? I go, yeah, really, you really sucked. And she goes, do you want to know how bad I was? And I said, yeah. And she goes, I got an email during the podcast. During the live interview, I think it was radio, during the live interview, $18,000 contract. And I, I'm not lying. She was bad. She was so bad. And, and she just, she just, after she worked with me for a year, she just spoke to a stage of 300 dentists. So authentically, she had to, she had to get over her fear. I put her on my stage one time. I have live events that I do. I have a three-day event. I put her on my stage and she just stood there and cried. And I told people, don't pay attention to Heidi. I'm doing exposure therapy. <laughs> she, she hit the big stage. So don't be afraid. I, I'm, so Jane, like you won't even get it. I'm sorry. I just keep on going because I get so excited to help people find their voice. I was a very polished speaker. I was in corporate America. And I was doing a training. It was a big sales training. And it was a morning meeting. And I said, I don't know what I said, but I mixed up the words. And I, from stage, I said, fart. <laughs> and I, I tried not, I like, just move on, just move on, stay polished. And this is years and years ago. <laughs> and I stopped and I went, all right, either you people are not listening to me or you don't think farts are funny. And <laughs> the room just roared. And from that point forward, I was a new speaker. I became very much who I am. Your authentic self. Yep. Yes. Yes. So did that answer your question? I don't remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, but I like you're using some language that's very familiar to me. And you're talking about things that I talk about too. I always talk about positioning as an expert. And in marketing on our websites, we always talk about the promise statement. And so you're weaving these things into what you actually are saying once you get on stage. And I really think that even though people may balk at the idea, oh, I don't want to sell when I get up on stage, I really think that what you're doing, if you can figure out a way to combine your ideas with what's authentic and true for you, it will be fine. My coach says that when I go into a selling mode for particular products, it kind of depends on what I'm selling, that I change my stance. And it's true. It's very, very true. Sometimes at the top of the podcast, I feel uncomfortable, you know, pitching something. And so I am now thinking, hmm, maybe I should go back and do that 
in a different way using this formula because I think maybe going with the guidelines might take me out of my head about it a little bit more and I'm building in more um, of that credibility in the numbers. And and so let me, uh, this is what I, I am a firm believer that it is a disservice to our audience if we do not invite them to do something with their life. It's like, we're going to sit there and go, I'm awesome. You're in trouble if you're not selling and you got to go get a J-O-B. And God knows, like for me, I'm so unemployable. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so I had to get over and, and, you know, it's funny because people are like, oh, Jane, you've always been so, you know, great at all this. So I'm going to tell you, I started doing my own business and I had a heck of a time selling myself because I grew up in a really complicated family. I grew up being, you don't shine. You're not better than anybody. You're the dumb right. kid. You're all the, you know, my next book coming out is telling the whole tale of all of the statistics in life. And and what I ended up was I had to really work through my own self-worth. Yeah. So when I hit the stage, there is a responsibility as a speaker. They have put me on a platform to transform lives. And if I'm not willing to do that, I should get off the stage. So I think it's really important that we're selling, but not slippery, slimy selling. That's gross. Like, I think that's gross. Like when I do my, any sales from stage, I always, there's a couple of different things I'll help people with. One is I say, okay, it would be a absolute disservice to everyone here if I did not invite you to take a look at a resource that I know will give you everything I have just presented here today. And I'm going to tell you, it is the best way to transition to, but let me also, another point. So one is I'm going to invite you into look at a resource. An invitation is not now I'm going to sell you something and I'm going to make you buy. Mm -hmm. And that, that is distasteful. And I, you know, I, I can go on and on out in the industry about people that are selling and it's, it's gross to me. Like people thank me after I sell to them because they're like, Oh my God, that is the most transparent sales pitch I've ever had. <laughs> and it really is. I'll go, okay, people, this is now the time that you're going to pull out your credit cards because I'm going to make you an unbelievable invitation that you are going to love. But let's also show, I'm going to show you where you can position the audience so that they say, we welcome you, your invitation. So we've talked about position me, right? position them, yep. the promise. So today we're going to look at some highly proven simple strategies that you're going to walk away with. And then the very last statement of your promise is, and we are also going to look at how you can connect with me further so that I can support you beyond this training or beyond this talk. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. And a keynote, keynote, you're going to be seating. You know, keynote, you go, you get paid, you're up there speaking. And then what you do, what I just did, and I love to be transparent because what did I just do? I just said, hey, I'm going to offer you all a gift. And seriously, it's a great gift. It's a better gift than what, you know, I do on most of my podcasts. But in honor of Jane and Jane, the Jane and Jane Yay, show. Yay, the J and J show, yes. <laughs> We're getting a great gift. Exactly. So you give a gift from stage. So you see, I'm going to take a look at how we can connect further so that I can provide value. You can grow your business. All right. So let's move on. Then you're into content. Mm -hmm. Then in your content. Now, I'm just going to tell you how I set up my client's talks. And that is three points within your talk. You can use an acronym, win, own, I am, whatever you want to use, or for me, it's really simple to write a talk with questions. The first question is, where are you? Second, where do you want to go? The third is, how do I get there? The best way that you get the offer in there is by saying, all right, so now we're going to look at how, how do we get there? I want to be your first step in taking action to you growing your business. I want to be that first step. So in front of you, and you've handed out cards, in front of you, there is a card that has three boxes. One, you can get my free gift. Two, you can hop on a call with me. Three, there's another piece, place for you to speak. And that's where you're selling. Here's, how, here's why you want to hop on a call with me. Because I'm really good at this. I know how to take your talk, take your message, turn it into an intro commercial, turn it into something that sells. And then you're, 
you're selling them on why they should connect with you. The sales conversation is then on the phone where you're just simply overcoming objections. They right. know what you want. They know what you need. You're, bas- you're basically selling the next step. You're not actually selling. You're selling the next step. And the next step is something intermediary. Get my free thing that will yeah. then lead to something else or what have you. Yeah. Okay. And, and here's the biggest mistakes. I've seen speakers of all levels making these mistakes. Here's what they do. They, they start out with a informational, motivational, and inspirational talk. And then at the very end, you were saying how your, your Change. stance changes. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, they become auctioneers. So what we have today for you is you can have an opportunity. <laughs> to talk. And all of a sudden, the, the audience feels your it, transition. The change. Yes. Yes. It, it makes a huge, it, it makes a huge, they take a step back rather than leaning in. When you offer an invitation, it softens it for you and you're within the integrity of what you've promised. I'm going to promise you, you're going to have an opportunity to see how we can connect further. Mm-hmm. When you get to the offer portion, you say, I promised you, and I am a woman of my word. I am going to give you an opportunity to connect further. Now, if you're selling something, like I do a lot of sales from stages. I'll, I'll go and sponsor an event, pay you know, 15000 to stand on a stage so that I can sell, and then I, you, know, you can close well into six figures. That's the model that I have grown my business, you know, a multi-million dollar business. So not I only do, are you not getting paid the 15 k you're paying it, and then you're speaking yep. to sell. So all your marbles are invested in that situation. Yes. And you want to make sure that you're doing a great job. A lot of my, let's say that a lot of our Wealthy Speaker Podcast listeners could be, I would say lots of them are well into their career and they're getting paid on a regular basis. But many of them, let's say they're at the beginning of their careers and they're just ramping up. If you're speaking for free, based on what you just said, Mm -hmm. it seems to me that it's a no-brainer for you to want to sell while you're on the platform. Now, what I think most of them want to sell isn't necessarily a product or a coaching or anything like that. What they want to sell is more speeches. Mm -hmm. You have a technique that can help them get more speeches. I believe that doing both, you know, several parts of your formula are still going to apply. They all apply because I do, I work with a lot of individuals that want to just get paid a fee. Okay. And, and quite frankly, I, you know, I'm a, it's great to get a fee. I'm a double dipper. Like somebody will pay me a fee to go speak. And then I'm like, you know what? While I'm up here, why don't you opt in, grab this free gift. And then I connect with people afterwards. So I get the fee and then I'm, you can have an online program, a membership site. You can have a, you know, sure. I, I have a colleague that has a multi-million dollar business and I think it's $59 a month on a membership site. So yeah. you can rock any, any stage and close anything. If individuals, so let me talk about the people that are established speakers. Yes. If you've got the established speaker, I'm going to tell you, the, I have, um, I think I can share her name. Do you know, you know Rita Davenport? Rita Davenport yeah. is like, I mean, goddess of speaking. And Rita called me. I love her. She wrote the forward to my book that I just launched. Um, and she said, I'll, and I told to her accent, well, she's like, girl, I want you to teach me everything you're doing because you are re- ridiculous. She knows. <laughs> she knows. I, she's hilarious. She knows that what the, the pre, the way that we have been speaking is getting a fee and it's great. But if you want to make more money, if you're an established speaker, launch something on top of that, offer it as a free gift, a free bonus mm-hmm. that you're now drilling people into the back end of your business and you can serve in a much higher level. Um, new speakers, if you want to get out there and hit platforms, speak for the sake of speaking. I'm going to tell you, I can speak once and get booked five times. Mm-hmm. I can speak and it doesn't matter. It didn't matter the room when I was doing mindset. I would speak once and you beg. I, that's what I do. I'm like, here's the deal, people. If I have to go home and sit behind a computer, I will not be here for another year. So what I want you to do is think about who needs me in front of their team, their audience, and their whatever. So so pitch yourself 
without being, you know, I, I would always act desperate. I'm like, no, seriously, I will speak for food. I'm an eater, so I will speak for food. And I've gotten in front of some audiences, but I always, I always made an offer to something further um, because that's how I was growing my business. But I'll tell you, there, is, there are many platforms that you can get on and you ask for a referral. You do, I'm very transparent. Like I'm, a, I, I'm known for what you see is what you get. So everything, I don't have a filter. Everything comes out of my mouth. Um, but if you're not that style of speaker... You want to do a formal, you know, this is an invitation. I would love to empower and inspire and more importantly, Mm -hmm. transform the companies that you're working with or for so that we can make sure that we are serving at the highest level. So if you want to be a hero, put me in front of an ideal audience and, you know, so you, you make the invitation. It's the same sale. We call it, we call it the help me speech. As you can see, I am passionate about fill in yeah. the link. Uh, if you know of anyone who could benefit, please come. Let's, let's have a chat after the, uh, after the presentation's over and, and asking for the business. Even, I even have people who say that's uncomfortable. Yeah. And, and it will be. And that goes back to, I'm telling you, if you have a killer talk that when you deliver that talk, people are, are, are jumping the needle, you have a right to be in front of that audience. You have to be in front of that audience. And I'm going to tell you, I remember my first offer. I did, I, I like to film my own events. So I did a little half day event. I brought a bunch of people in, probably half of them were my friends. The other half were viable, interested individuals. And I had set out, I'm going to do a 1997 offer. It's going to be almost two grand. And I'm doing my time. It was, I mean, everybody's like, oh my God, this is the best ever. And I'm like, okay, I have an invitation. And every little voice in my head said, you, you can't make that offer. You cannot make that offer. So I'm like, the next thing that came out of my mouth is I said, so it's going to be six ninety seven. <laughs> <laughs> I totally chickened out. And I, everybody, like, I swear, the people that weren't my friends and family bum rushed the room, gave me their thing <laughs> And I'm like, darn it, I should have asked for $7.97. <laughs> and, and, and I had been Fear. speaking and selling for years, but there was something in me saying, you're that kid. Mm-hmm. So you got to, if you want to be a successful speaker, you have got to own your stuff, AKA, you got to get over your issues. And, and trust me, I am confident. People, I get off stage, people are like, oh my God, I thought you were like 10 feet tall. And I, I started out as the invisible kid. I didn't want to be seen or heard. So, and I'm still a hot mess. Trust me. Like, <laughs> I'm not great on stage, but inside there's still, I literally, and Jane, you probably experienced this. I could be speaking authentically in there, but there's a little voice every once in a while saying, hey, you got to pay attention to the, the people that are to the right of the audience. I'm like, okay. Like we get this dialogue going. Yes. But sometimes the dialogue is saying, I don't know if this is that good. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dialogue you got to stop. Yeah, I don't think they're buying this. I don't think they're <laughs> buying this. Um, I, I really do like that saying that Alan Weiss says, uh, the first sale is to yourself. And I would say that if any of this, if, if this whole conversation so far has made you feel uncomfortable and you think no way, I think that you need to work on that first sale being to yourself because I, I heard it years ago at NSA, somebody saying, um, well, if you've got great stuff, why wouldn't you want more people to hear it? You know, if you've got great products, why wouldn't you want them takes to take something home with them? Uh, and so I really get that. We're not saying, please, please hear this. I remember a, I used to work for two years representing speakers at a speakers bureau, uh, exclusive speakers. And a client said to me, please don't send me anybody who's going to sell hard from the platform. She had a speaker that she had paid $50,000 to, and she broke it down per minute. And it ended up costing her like $1,500 per minute for him to sell for 15 minutes from the stage, his Mm -hmm. product uh, and materials and blah, 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 blah. We're not talking about that, right? No. And and quite frankly, there are, yes, it's a yes and. 
because when I invite them to look at a resource and quite frankly, people would say, Jane, you can come and you can sell from stage. Quite frankly, I didn't want to sell from stage. I can sell a thousand dollar to a two thousand dollar product from stage and close twenty five thousand, or I can move people into a call, sell a twenty five, you know, a fifteen, twenty, twenty five, thirty thousand dollar package, and make a whole lot more. Right. So I would forego that. But let me tell you, I have been in some three day events where literally they'll sell for an hour. I mean, it gets to the point where it's like, okay, that's enough. Yeah. But let me, let me emphasize, when you are quote-unquote selling, it's really an invitation. What you're doing is educating at the same time. So if I'm saying you want to go, like you want to take a look at mysuccesskit.com, and I'm going to tell you exactly why. Number one, you've got to know where to go to speak. You've got to know what to say to get booked. More importantly, how to introduce yourself so that they – absolutely cannot live without you because many of you, and then I'm telling what the benefit is. And then I'm saying, because many of you are struggling to find places to go and have people connect with you immediately in this process. And then you're teaching at the same time you're making the offer. So it's the offer, the invitation, as well as helping them see how it how it relates to, you know what it's like, you have you've may have heard Glenna does the SPA, um, story point application. Mm-hmm. So I like to call it the, the, the OPA, the offer, the point, and the application. So you make your offer, what's the point, and how does it apply to me? So you're still educating. You know, it's like, it's like telling somebody who's on a deserted island how wonderful a burger is from McDonald's. Like, oh my God, this burger killer. They've been on that island for a month. And then you go, okay, hey, take care. Or they're <laughs> drowning. They're drowning. You're like, well, I'm certified life, you know, lifeguard and I'm, I can swim through anything. Okay. I don't want to intrude upon you and make an offer to get you out of that water. Right, right. People are drowning. No one will tell you that. No one will tell you they are in pain. Some will, and those are the ones you're like, okay, I got it, now hire me. But there are individuals that will not tell you the degree of pain that they are actually in. So don't assume. I'll tell you, I make so many assumptions, and it's it's a bad habit of mine. We are great at making up stories. We can make stories. I remember at the front of a room, I was going on, you know, when you get this one person that just isn't buying it or they just seem bored – the rest of the audience was loving it. And I'm doing this. T- I'm like knocking it out of the park. This one guy. And I kept delivering almost to this one guy. Like I got so honed in on serving. And I'm everybody's like, ah, this is awesome. Afterwards, he came up and I said, dude, you know, you look like you were sleeping. Is there a way that I could have, you know, served you better? And he goes, you're not going to understand what you have done for my life. He said, I am going through the greatest trauma. I have not slept for three days, but I knew I had to be here and you have completely changed my life. And he had tears. And then I started crying because I thought, what an idiot I am. Yeah. (laughs) You thought the guy was uncomfortable and, or not happy and, you know, arms crossed. And you, it it just goes to show that you never really know what's going on inside the mind of the people in your audiences. And I, I remember Rosita Perez saying, uh, having a great story about that. She was um, someone who was quite tre- treasured, like Glenna, uh, yeah. someone that treasured around NSA. Tell us about your book. Oh, this, I forget book. to tell people about my book. My, my <laughs> publishing, my book writing coach, she's like, have you, please start talking about it. It is, uh, we just released it May 10th by noon. I sold a couple of hundred copies, number one bestseller in selling and speaking um, and sales presentations. It's Speak With Confidence, Sell With Authority. And it's by Jane M. Powers. That's If you go to Amazon, Jane M. Powers, I think my team Forgot to take it down um, from 99 cents from our launch day. <laughs> so if you got get the Kindle version, it's only like 99 cents. I got to get that done. So, um, But it is Jane M. Powers, and it's Speak With Confidence, Sell With Authority. The entire like mindset, how to speak, your intromercial, your awesome. talk, everything is in there. 
Well, I got to go, Jane, because I got to go hit on Kindle. You told me about that, and I forgot I forgot to get it um, before we talked, and, and now I really, really want it. Before and I wanted it, now I really, really want everybody it. Everybody gets a ticket, whoever buys the book, and also, this is so cool. With the book, you get a free ticket to the event, which is my three-day event. Any three-day event I do twice a year, wow. and they're usually in Arizona, but um, let's talk impact.com is the event information. But if you buy the book, you get a free ticket. If you take a picture of yourself with the book and you post it on my Facebook, Jane M. Powers, I upgrade you to Roadmap to Impact, which is a 30-day program right before the event. So it primes you for the experiential version of the book. That's fantastic, Jane. I'm excited. And I hope that I hope that people will, you know, take everything that we've been talking about and really kind of um, massage it so that it works for them in a way that feels authentic and it feels good and it feels positive and that you're serving your customers. Yeah. It's, and what's, it's so important to just feel the fear. Fear doesn't go away. People, it just becomes a companion. Just turn the volume down and turn the volume up on what is possible. See yourself on big stages. See yourself in front of that ideal client. See yourself sharing the stage with the with the person that you can you know would just love to. So it's fear doesn't go away. You just have to have it your constant companion and befriend that fear. I love it. I love it. And I'm going to talk to you about coming to one of my live events. Excellent. Ooh. Well. And we'll do a mutual, we'll do a mutual connection of events. So I love it. If you want to hang out with the Jane, it's like the Doublemint twins, the Jane and Jane show. <laughs> well, really, a lot of what you're talking about, I do in the mar- on the marketing side of things, mm-hmm. and uh, I think that there's a lot of really complimentary things there. Okay, so we're gonna put everything in the show notes that we've talked about so far. Let's give the website again where they can go to get their freebie. Okay. Freebie is myspeakersuccesskit.com. Myspeakersuccesskit.com. Okay. And then for the event, I'll give you the secret. I give everybody the secret. It's like not a secret when I'm doing this on your Jillian person podcast, (laughs) but the other for the live event, it's let's talk impact.com. And you can get an idea of the feel of everything and what, you know, what, what I believe every speaker, this is where the money is, is in your own events. Great. Great. The money is and, in that. And I have a lot of uh, clients who they might be actually earning a million dollars per year speaking, but can they keep up that pace forever? They need something else to be able to start some ancillary income so that they don't get burnout and then never come back to speaking again. I mean, how long can you really sustain 70 engagements or even 50 is really hard. And so, that's, that's exactly what I, you know, I love, I love to play. So I love to not have to be going from one end of the world to the other. Yeah. That's, and this is residual income. I mean, this is easy. You can get literally, you can stand from stage. I mean, I, I just sold a thousand dollar program from a sponsorship. I, I paid, um, I, you know, five grand to stand on the stage and sold, I think I sold about $26,000. You guys, that is in 50 minutes. Yeah. I, I like making 20 to 25 grand or more. I mean, in 50 minutes I did, I did a, I paid 17,000 and made 78 for one hour of a talk. And you guys, it's not this. I'm like, oh, but it's you. It's anybody. This is a bit of a paradigm shift, I think, for some people on the uh, on the li- on the line. But we I just, just lost you, listeners. Let's remain open. Let's remain open. It's not all about paying to play necessarily. What if right. you could get paid and do this? How cool would it's that? It's the best. Be? Right? Yes. Okay, cool. Well, we're going to keep talking, Jane Powers. Thank you so much for your time today. And I would like to say, uh, for those of you listening, if you have questions or have enjoyed it, I want to hear from you personally. I am inviting you to email me, jane at speakerlauncher.com. And I'd like to know two things. Number one, where did you listen? Did you listen from 
uh, speakerlauncher.com on the podcast page? Did you go onto iTunes? Did you go onto Stitcher, Google Play, et cetera, et cetera? I'd love to know where you're listening. And number two, I'd like to know one thing that you are going to try as a result of this recording. So that's uh, what I'm looking for from you. I hope you will reach out, take action, and make that happen. And with that, we will say, see you soon, Wealthy Speakers. Bye for now, everyone. Thanks for listening to The Wealthy Speaker Show. Please visit speakerlauncher.com for your free Wealthy Speaker audit and visit speakerlauncher.com forward slash podcast for show notes and many more resources to help you catapult your speaking business. See you soon, wealthy speakers.